Hello, friends. My name is Mac Wilson. I'm from The Current, and I am in The Current studio with Amel and the Sniffers, all the way from Melbourne, Australia. Thank you for coming in today. Hello. I was looking up what you're going to be up to in the next couple of weeks or months, and you're on a bill with the Beths and then Paul Kelly. Paul Kelly is not a name that's familiar to, I think, 99.9% of Americans, and he's apparently a very, very beloved figure in Australia. So can you try to contextualize the importance of this particular guy? Um. I guess like he's folky, folk rocky, sort of Australian. Australia's Neil Young. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it, yeah. Pretty much. Okay, I was trying to put in my head like whether he'd be like a Bruce Springsteen, but a Neil Young. Okay, that's a that's a good way of putting it. Um, is he more Springsteen? I don't know. I know, I, I would say he's more Neil Young. Yeah, more, yeah. Springsteen. But that's he's, true. He's like, he's the guy. <laughs> so I, I, are you going to gear any particular... You're you're set in any particular way when you're you're playing with somebody who's as massive as him in a couple of weeks. No, no. okay, <laughs> not at all, not a hit, not one little bit. <laughs> we just do what we do. That's all we can do. So it was great watching your performance a couple of minutes ago as you went through three songs, like back to back to back. And the name of the last song that you played was Guided by Angels. And it reminded me of the experience of seeing Guided by Voices live, where it's just one song after another. It's like there's no... It, everything is planned out and there it's completely effortless going from one song to the next. When you put together your set lists for any given night, do you kind of plan it to go like exactly seamless in one night or do you try to shake things up as you go along? I try and write a set list new every night, which I think the boys get a bit sick of, but I like the variety because when we're playing the same set list every night, I feel like a bit like a, a dancing monkey or something. So it's fun to shake it up, but uh, I try and just, I don't know, it feels almost mathematically fun, like when you can get it in the right order, you're like, ooh, that feels good. And we usually do it in blocks of three, then have a little break, drink break, say good day, blocks of three. And the reason we do that is just because someone really early said, you should play in blocks of three. And we thought, all right, let's try that. And now we just don't do anything else. <laughs> That's really fun because here on The Current, every year on Memorial Day weekend and Labor Day weekend, we do Block Rock and Weekend where we play three song sets of current artists. And that's basically how you, you plot out your, your sets. So we'll have to keep that in mind as we do Block Rock and Weekends from here on out. Yes, please. Another bit of slang. What does gacked mean? Um, gacked is like a term when you've had too many drugs, usually like amphetamines or uh, ecstasy, and you start like gurning and your eyes get all... And, um, so it's pretty much the, um, yeah, the sensation of being like extremely high, I suppose. So gacked on anger is basically saying, you, you know, so angry, you're like, come on, yeah, you're almost excited because you're just like, I don't know, when you get that much adrenaline, when you're pissed off, you kind of just feel like doing crazy stuff. So it seems that every artist who comes in lately, it's kind of like asking, what did you do on your summer vacation? It's like, so how did you spend the coronavirus pandemic? So apparently all of you were in the same location, the same house together, and you were able to do a lot of uh, work together. Can you walk us through what that experience was like? Yeah, well, we, we were living together just before the pandemic started. And yeah, when the coronavirus hit, that's when um, the nightmare started, I guess. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I guess like, you know, we had strict laws about like who you could see or when you could go out or whatever. So we kind of had it as an advantage that we were living together, that we were able to work together. We had a storage unit, um, not far from our house. I think it was within the five kilometer radius that we were allowed to be in. And that's where we wrote, um, comfort to me in there, the, the album. So yeah, we didn't do any writing at home. It wasn't like that. We weren't, we're not, we're not grateful dead. You know, we're not, we don't do that shit. But as well, I feel like, um, so we had lots of lockdowns. So we, I think we had maybe like six or seven. Mm -hmm. So in, in the lockdowns, usually we didn't do any writing. And then in between we'd do writing. So there was a lot of time just sitting on our hands doing whatnots. Like the boys played a bit of, what game were you playing on that? FIFA. 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 They played a lot of FIFA. I took up reading. I never really read a book before. And now I read all the time and we just watch crap on YouTube. <laughs> so that was a lot of idle time as well. We can't paint the illusion that we're working hard the whole time. When you hear Americans talk about lockdown, you've got to think that we're kind of ridiculous when we say lockdown because it's not the same thing as it was in Europe or Australia. So was this literally like you could not leave your house or only for like certain amounts of time a day? Yeah, you couldn't leave more than – for a lot of the lockdowns, you couldn't leave more than five kilometres from your house. You couldn't leave for more than an hour a day. 8 p.m. curfew if you're caught out at 8, that you'd have to like prove where you're going or whatever. Um, yeah, so that was happened a fair bit. 
So you've had the record under your belt for a, a, about a year now. And as you're, you're debuting it, still a lot of these songs for the very first time for a lot of these cities that you're playing in, uh, it, it, I was going to say, what are the ways that you keep it fresh? But by mixing up the set list every night, that seems to be one of the ways. Do you feel like you're already planning for the new record? Or are you just kind of finding yourself with the one that you just put out? I think the latter. <laughs> we haven't done much writing or anything and not much thinking either. Um, so we've just been celebrating the comfort to me and playing it live. And I think we're still having fun doing that and seeing people's reactions to that. Um, so this year's kind of just dedicated to having fun playing it live and being out in the world. And then next year we'll put our heads into writing some more things, I suppose. We are here in the current studio with Amel and the Sniffers. Thank you for stopping in today and uh, chatting about your music and uh, what you've been up to. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Cheers.